Hello everyone, welcome to our new video. In this video, we are going to discuss about a tutorial that is modeling a cantilever beam using solid and beam elements in ANSYS Mechanical. So, in the, for this case, we are going to take one problem statement. So, in this problem statement, you can see that a uh, cantilever beam of length 4 meter is fixed on one side and we are going to apply 8 kN force on another side of the cantilever beam. Now, if we are going, if we look at the analytical formula, analytical uh, equation that is available to predict the deformation at any location, you will. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details, but uh, the formula. Uh, if you uh, derive the formula, it will look like something like this. And if we are going to calculate the deformation that is hap going to happen in y direction due to eight kilonewton, that will be around 0 0.005103 meter. So now let's start and see that how we can model this problem in ANSYS, uh, ANSYS uh, software. And finally, I will also put some references like for the because in most of the cases we might uh, require to extend our knowledge to ANSYS Mechanical APDL, which is actually a backbone for all the ANSYS Mechanical GUIs that are available. So uh, you can assume that whatever you are going to see next uh, has some background coding. Uh, inherited uh, for each and every boundary conditions that we are going to define. So each and every boundary condition has a uh, means assigned a bond uh, code uh, or assigned uh, keyword to it. So I will so quickly show you that uh, how those boundary conditions are getting assigned in, uh, means in the background. But uh, in case if you want to further explore then what you can do is that you can explore the APDL that will actually allow you to understand that how those boundary conditions are getting applied whenever we are defining any boundary condition material properties uh, cross sectional IDs or any uh, uh, any uh, feature inside the ANSYS mechanical so let's uh, start with the modeling so as this is going to our first tutorial video so I will go from the scratch and show you how you can set up the model inside the workbench environment and uh, further assign the material properties, boundary condition and post process the results. So let's start. So first of all, whenever we are going to open the workbench, you will see that on le extreme left, there is an analysis system combo box. So inside this combo box, you will see all the different type of uh, physics uh, uh, that you can actually define and uh, start the working environment. So here you can see this coupled field, harmony coupled field, model coupled field, static coupled field, transient. So this, all the different analysis systems are designed for, uh, for a specific target application. Like suppose if you want to perform some type of buckling analysis, you can choose the eigenvalue buckling analysis. If you are only interested in seeing the modal analysis, like you want to predict the eigenfrequencies or the eigenshapes of uh, any uh, vibrational modes. So you can direct use the modal analysis if you want to perform a static structure which means that the loadal, loading is very very small uh, not small loading is very very slow so then you can use the static structural system so let's start with the static structural system so once you add the static structural system you will see that there are different uh, tabs first of all you will see there is an engineering data which is actually used to define the material property so whenever we are modeling any finite element method model, we require to assign the material properties. So second is geometry. So that is the CAD representation of your model. After that, there is a model level. So under the model level, we will define the connections, meshing, and uh, other uh, like if you want to define the remote conditions. So we will not go into detail, but uh, I'll just uh, when I'm going to open, I will show you all those options. Then is the setup. So setup, we are going to decide more on the how we are going to perform the static analysis system. After that, under the result, once everything is set, then we can run the model and we can post process all the results. So let's start with this one. So first of all, when you are going to go into the engineering data, by default, a structural steel is available. And there are some other engineering data that are that comes with ANSYS package. So if you click on the engineering data source that is on the top, you will have access to all the material properties that are inbuilt inside this ANSYS workbench environment. And on top of that, if you have further ANSYS grantor license, then you will be able to access a large amount of material uh, data. So ANSYS data com uh, grantor comes with a very huge uh, material library. 
So for this case, let's uh, try to add our own material uh, uh, values. So for that, for example, suppose if I create one my mat uh, material, so I'm just naming it. You can name it at uh, any other material properties based upon the values that you have. Now on again left hand side, you can see it is allowing you, us to add different type of material properties, uh, material behavior. So there are different type of material behaviors like if you want to go into the plasticity or if the material is poly of a class of polymer, then you can use the hyperelastic material. Similarly, if you want to simulate viscoelastic materials, geomechanical models, so everything is uh, you can directly add under your MyMat model. So for a time being, I want to only define the young modulus values. So as we are going to deal with uh, dealing with a static structure analysis, so it's not actually required to define any density also. So I will add this thing. So once you can drag and drop the, your my material or double click on the isotropic elasticity, you will see one extra tab here. So in this tab, we need to require the input at least two values. So here you can see there are different ways, even though if you don't have the young modulus in the Poisson's ratio values, you can enter the shear modulus and the bulk modulus. So any, but at least you will require to at least enter two of these values. So you can go and look at this combinations. So for a time being, as we are going to directly compare the results with the analytical expression, and uh, if you look at the analytical Bernoulli's equation, so it doesn't actually have any Poisson's effect in it. So for a time being, I will enter the Poisson's ratio as zero because I am not interested in seeing any Poisson's effect inside my model. Uh, next thing is the Young modulus. So as uh, if we look at these values, so it's 2.8 e to the power 10 Pascal. So I will enter the value. 2.8 e to the power 10. So if you have values in another unit system, that's not an issue. You can directly change the, you are, use the your appropriate unit system from here. And we don't actually need to bother whenever you are working with an ANSYS workbench environment. So we don't need to require bother much about the unit systems. The internal conversion will happen appropriately. So it's well tested and. Uh, you can use any unit system in which your data is available. And finally, we can also change the unit system inside the ANSYS mechanical environment. So for our time being, once uh, as we have defined the material properties, the next thing is that we need to create the geometry because uh, one thing is that if you have the geometry from the SOLIDWORKS or any other CAD tool, you can directly uh, right click here, import geometry and import those, those specific CAD model. Now, in this case, as we don't have, so what I will do is that I will quickly clear the, uh, create this geometry as it's uh, not that complex. So let's uh, have a quick look at our dimensions. So it's a cross section of a square that is of 0 0.346 meters and it's 4 meter in length. So let's uh, wait uh, for a space claim to open. So when a space claim is open, so let me quickly first go to the plane view. Then I will first check my unit systems. So you can go to the, if you want to check the unit systems, you can go to the space claim options. And here you can see the length is actually in the millimeters. So I will change first it to met metric scale. Otherwise, we need to enter all the values in a millimeter. So now let's uh, start from here. So the value was 0 0.346. Okay, looks like let me delete this. We don't want this one. Zero point three four six. And let me hit the tab button. Zero point three four six. Now I will extend this cross section in the y direction because by 4 meter. So my geometry is ready. Now next what we can do is that we can go to the ANSYS mechanical environment. Let me close it. Okay, let me open the ANSYS mechanical.
so the model is open now uh, let's uh, have a quick look at the model setup so first uh, suppose when you are going to open the ansys mechanical so there are two ways one is that you can control everything through the top ribbon another is that uh, you can control it uh, vertically by this uh, branch under this outline section so once uh, you look at this thing so first you will see that there is a geometry tab so uh, the geometry is coming from your cad software or if you have created something in the space claim that will come under this geometry tab now if i'm going to click on this geometry you will see there are there different options like stiffness behavior so i can control between the flexible and the rigid options so even though suppose if you are working with a very weak assembly and in for some models we know that they are very going to be very stiff compared to other components we can directly use the rigid option so this is computationally very cheap compared to solving a flexible model similarly there are gaskets and other options now for time being for this model because by default you will see the structural steel is assigned but we want uh, the material uh, that we had created to be assigned to this body so if you expand this option so you will see this option is coming here so i can directly choose the my mat model now next thing is that suppose if you want to cross verify those properties are coming inside the ansys mechanical or not you can expand this material tab click on the material so here you will see those values are getting reflected here similarly if you have defined any other parameters which is actually a function of some other parameter then it will also show as a graph now next thing is that we need, because now we had defined the material properties we have the cad model now next thing is that we also need to mesh this model so for a time being Uh, I'm not going to play around with because there are different mesh settings, but uh, which can definitely help us to control local mesh or even the global size of this mesh. But uh, I'm not going to go into the details. Let me go with the default mesh setting. So if I'm going to click the default mesh setting, so it's creating a uh, two element across this uh, height and also across the width, and uh, along the length also there are uh, multiple elements. So I hope this will be enough. for this simple model so let me do another thing let me fix this cantilever beam on one side so for again assigning all the boundary conditions on the load you can right click here insert and all the boundary conditions that are applicable for this model will pop up at this location the another thing is that as i was highlighting you can also do everything through the top ribbon so if i'm going to go into the environment tab again if i want to apply some loads all the loads that are applicable for this analysis system will start showing here similarly for support all the supports will show here now oh, the next thing is that let me apply the force so force we need to apply in y direction so one thing is that you can directly define by vector so if you are going to define by vector you need to give some direction so let's me select this edge and show you what actually happens So if I'm going to select this edge, you will see this force is getting applied in this direction. Similarly, if I'm going to select this edge, so the direction will change. So in some cases for complex geometries, if we are not aware of the means uh, any geometric kind of entity, uh, uh, entity is not available to decide the direction, what you can do is that you can directly decide based upon the components. So if I'm going to change the components, then I will get get, get a direct access to x, y, and z component. so in this case because this is going to be my x direction so let me apply minus 8000 oh, this is y okay sorry so this is going to be my minus x okay so the force is getting applied at this location as the model is simple so we don't need to require to play around with any of these settings so for a time being let's hit on solve button but stay tuned in coming tutorials uh, we will go through some of the examples which will help us to understand more on this different settings so now the model is solved it's quite fast so you can see the model got solved in within 1 second now let's compare the deformation along this edge okay so this is not actually showing up so let me display so ruler so let it so we can see the value is coming 0.0051264 and what we are actually expecting was 
very very close so whatever we set up we did is justified it, i think if you are going to compute it's within 1% of the deviation is going to be there between analytical and your uh, the model that we just created now next thing is that suppose i want don't want to go with the because whatever we are currently doing is with a solid elements but there are other elements which are quite effective in handling this type of applications so that is beam elements so for if you want to define it as a beam element because beam is something that is represented by using a line element so we can go to the space claim so let me duplicate this system because i don't want to mess up anything so let me again go to the space claim so a space claim actually allows us to extract beam from any solid cad so as we already have a solid representation of the beam just by doing one click we will be able to extract the beam line representation along with the cross sectional information so just uh, let this workbench open i will show you that how you can quickly convert this thing so let me uh, zoom back so that the model will be there in the gui so you can hit the z button so z button will actually allow you to zoom back now if you go to the prepare tab so in under the prepare tab you can see there is a extract option so if i'm going to click on this extract you will see this solid body will get suppressed and this body is now getting represented by a line element and this line element has some cross sectional properties like area you can see area is there an area centroid and if we are going to go into this uh, extracted profile you will see this uh, uh, further information and uh, let's go back to the mechanical now and under the mechanical again this cross sectional information will start getting highlighted under the cross sectional tab so that i will also uh, demonstrate so the similarly for beam elements you need to define first define the material properties the geometry we had already converted so let's uh, wait and see how it actually looks inside the mechanical okay so this is zoom to fit now if i go to the now you can see the solid body is no uh, gone and uh, the geometry is getting represented by a line body again under the assignment we can use the material properties that we had already defined and mess i will go with the generate mess now one thing is that by default the cross sectional is not actually something that is getting shown here but if you are going to click on this cross section thick beam and cell now you will see the representation is something like a solid model but again just keep in mind it is not something like a solid model this is just for visualization purpose because the cross sectional information is coming from the space claim and this is your cross sectional profile with height width and the area ixx iyy izz information now next is that we need to fix this model let me hide this one because this might be a little bit confusing so for again we can fix the beam on one side and for force we can go and apply on the node and now if we are going to solve it we will get the result so here we can see this results are metric 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 not wrong Zero point zero zero five one two six. So again, this is very close to whatever we are expecting for this beam model. Now, for beam again, if you want to suppose in uh, visualize the stresses of for this cross section, so you can go here and there is a beam section result. And if I am going to set it to yes, and uh, now if I am going to evaluate, it will show the cross. I mean, it, it will show you the three D representation of the. beam cross section uh, beam along with the cross sectional information now the another is that the ansys also offers a beam tool so this beam tool will actually allow you to beam tool stress maximum bending uh, 
maximum combined direct stresses. So these things you can directly ev evaluate. Similarly, if you are interested in the bending moment, axial force, torsional moment, shear force, shear moment diagram, so you can do this thing. But the only thing is that it will require some type of path. So you can go first here, insert, cross section, and let me choose this path. So I will create this thing. Instead of two point, I will use one edge. So this is my path. Now let me create this thing. So if I am going to create this, you can see it is giving me total shear force, total bending moment, and the total displacement. So this data will automatically get highlighted as a total uh, this one shear moment diagram. So next is that uh, as I wanted to highlight, there are very few good videos that are already available on YouTube. So that's the reason that I'm not going to go in detail on the APDL. So I really find these videos very intuitive and very helpful. So thanks FE Analysis and Mahdi for creating these videos. I will put the link and also some additional links for your read up. Just go through them. I hope uh, that will help you in getting familiarized with this tutorial. Thank you. See you in the next video.